All right, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing the cold molding today. Dawson came down to give me a hand here. It's on the weekend, and we're going to i got to fix this little thing I scratched the wall here. So he's trying that out for me. I'm going to start the cold molding. And he wanted to see how far I've been doing because he's been in school. And we're getting near the end. So what I got, I, I just got my little 18 bolt chop saw set up here. This thing works good. It's a slide. And um, I'm cutting my molding. I'm going to use my 18 bolt, um, 18 gauge finish nail. I got a, I think there's a one and three quarter inch nail in there. That'll work. And I'm going to put some of these up. Cut this one to length. See, we, we're going to use, we didn't tape the ceiling because they didn't want to. They said just throw the cove molding up like it was and it matches the other rooms. So there we go, guys. We're going to do that. I'm going to put about four nails in this one. Watch my shiny head. Oh, I'll get that again. Now these are all going to get painted and they have to paint the ceiling. And then what I like to do is look for any dark marks when I'm done. And then I'll put a little tiny bead of caulk on it and then I'll just touch the head like I did on this window. And they're going to paint this. Isn't this window trim pretty? Did you see this Dawson? I like this PVC stuff. Much better than what was here. It was cracked and warped and broke crap. So we'll go on the next one. I cut this one 89 and a quarter. Let's see how good that'll fit. Does that look okay over there, Dawson? Yep. Let's see what it does over here. Uh, see what that looks like. That looks nice and tight, don't it? Uh-huh. All right, well, let's nail this bad boy. I like that little roundy chop saw. Now, if you look, here's my studs. And I remember where my wires are. Just be careful when you're nailing some of these and remember we got a wire that goes right here even though it's in a metal and it's back about three inches for actually it went behind the stud so I don't think it could be in the way if you wanted it to but always remember where you can nail and think about pipes and wires and what have you I like these 18 volt tools. They're working pretty good, aren't they, D? Mm -hmm. He's used a lot in this building. And look at that. See, you see that little black line? I don't know if you can in the film there, but a little tiny. Well, I like to caulk that because it's a beautiful paint job when you're done. If you're fussy when you do your trim moldings, I'm telling you, it can make or break a job. If you have a guy do some crappy molding, it'll look good or it'll look bad, you know? So, we're set to move along here. And then I want a mark of 57. Check this here, 57 and a half. I put a little mark on that earlier. Now, we just turn our chop saw the opposite way. We're doing 45s on cove. Here's my mark, and what I do is I transfer the line across the top in pencil, and then I cut it long, guys. Always cut it long. Not a lot, but I know it's too long, but I gotta check it. If it's too short, we're kind of wasting materials. So then, this is around the top of the shower. And I realize it's too long, but watch the, you see how boring this looks having it? That's a PVC board because I didn't want to tape this and do drywall. I thought it'd be a sloppy mess and I don't know how square I could get it. So watch the difference. I know this won't fit in there yet, but let's see how long, see how long that is. But look at the instant look of that. Isn't that pretty? Once you get like a, a body line, a curve like these, and then you throw, that's instant gratitude, you know? So, I'm about, feel that? It's touching, see it? I'm roughly an eighth of an inch long. So I'm gonna trim it and I'll try another one. And see my mark, I just wanna come up to it. All right guys, that fits in there pretty good. And um, I don't know if I wanna put it into the PVC board. I probably ought to. 
I don't want a gap, you know. And there's no pipes or wires on this side. This was cut off from that other one over there. And I want to always use the least amount of waste. So come over and check your inside corner and get that exact amundo. Then on the outside corner, I come in here and I try to do nice square corners when I do my budding. Hold that still, and give us a pencil line here. Okay? And then this. It's going to become an outside corner, so it's not going back that way, it's going to come out this way. So then I'll put a quick dot out farther to let me know the angle I need, and then I need a backside angle. Okay? So here's my mark I made on the backside with a scribbly here. So if you follow this up, you can use a square if you want. But that would be the inside here. We want an outside corner, and if I placed it back in the saw this way, there's our angle. But if I did that, that would make an inside corner. So we got to take our piece and turn it around. And we put it in here. Now we're doing the opposite. We want to make it longer, not shorter. So I'm going to bring this down. And see, that's about where I want to cut it, right there. So I'm going to make it longer and come out to here. And that'll be our test. Set. Now if you look at this piece, that's the inside corner. So you can see that. This will be an outside corner. See that you can't see that. So that'll be up here like this. Now it'll give us a nice looking outside corner. And so let's test and see how good this is. If I had an example piece of cut off, I don't have that many cut yet. See what I like to do is tape the ceiling and wall because it'll stop the airflow. But when you use a molding and you caulk it, I put my corner back up there, my inside corner, so I like it. Bring that up, and I'm going to check my cut. See, I did my correct cut, but as you can see, it's still too long. That's what I like. I don't want it short. It costs money making short. Come around, check my line. My line is still good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this line to the bottom so now that I can see it. So now we're going to make one more cut. And see their line. So what I want to do is come up to my line. And so I bring my saw down, bring it into touch. Now that's where it caught. Now I want to keep coming in until I get rid of that. Now I'll check it. See that? I can just see my line. Let's check it. Like I said, I like to cut them two or three times. Because once you make it short, you can't add on. Look around to this edge. And I'm going to take my pencil. If I can touch it with my pencil, which I can, I want to see where it's printing. Now if I look over here, it still looks to be a sixteenth of an inch long. And I see a sixteenth inch of my... It's so a one more sixteenth and we got it, guys. So I bring my saw down. I slide it into my saw. I bring it up. Check it, come over that 16th of an inch. Now we're going to check it. See, our line is gone. I think we're exactly on our mark. So we'll slide her up there again. I'm telling you, it's the best way to do it. Check that out, guys. If you look from this angle, you see my dotted line. It's exactly there. I can nail this. I can be confident that's a good corner. So now we're ready to nail it off. And that looks good down there. I gotta check it here. It looks awesome. Um, these little marks are where my studs are. Uh oh, we're out of nails, guys. All right, I put some nails in it. Oh, got her backwards. Got some nails in it. And uh, hopefully she'll work this time. I uh, wanna get that fitment looking good. Check my outside line. It's exactly there. There's no pipes or wires. And then, look at that, isn't that pretty good? That looks good. We're gonna keep moving on. 
I wanted to show you an outside corner and an inside corner look pretty good. Like I said, I got some fast dry acrylic latex. I'm going to put in this little tiny line. A lot of people don't care. I like them gone and they look seamless. I wanted to show you an inside and an outside. This is that little surround around the tub here. Remember we had the gap and I, you know whatever. We're covering this up. So I cut an inside. See how nice that fits. And then here we're doing the same thing on an outside. So I put a little line here. Then I put a little X up here, whatever, at the top, so I know I'm going out. I gotta cut that little baby. See, this, this little piece we just did is so small, and I drew a line, but I just wanna make sure it's in the correct location, so I'll take a square, and if, see how that doesn't look real square? It's off by about a sixteenth of an inch. So then I'll flip it, and I'll follow it around to the opposite side join my lines together so nice about these carpenter pencils you just lean them and then I'll come across this side now I know that's pretty accurate and then knowing that this fit up here like that and we have to grow it taller on this side I'll do my X over here and then our inside line is that we're gonna grow bigger so then I can also do this set my little square on here and like I said, I lean my pencil. That's what we need. And then if I take my square and flop it again, this is how I do this. And it just gives me a reference when I get to the saw that I don't waste material. You see, this is even a cutoff. You're not going to see that. But I don't want to waste material on any of These are only $4, but, you know, it adds up on the job. So if I can use as much scrap. So right there is our, our angle. So it's pretty much got to go like that. And... It's got to be cut back cut, so this is an outside corner. See that? So that tells me that I cut it properly the first time. So I'm going to put this little piece up there. And I'm going to put this up there, which is a cutoff. Again, I didn't waste it to make one. But you see how nice that outside corner will be? There's a little tiny gap there, so I'm going to fine tune that. And then it's going to get caulked and painted. And I'll probably glue the little guy on. Okay guys, this is them dark lines I'm talking about. It's, I, watch the difference. You see this here? It looks okay, but watch. Just a little tiny bit of caulk. Watch the difference here. What I do is I just put a little skim coat in there like that. Smooth your finger in there. You get any excess, wipe it on a rag. Tell me that doesn't look instantly better. Go and smooth your finger. If it needs a hair more. Whoop. Smooth it and lose it. Look at that. What a difference a dollar makes, right? Woo what do you think, guys? Now you can see the dark lines are gone. The nail heads are gone. They're going to be painting from here up. I don't know if she picked gray or not in a white ceiling. I'd use a uh, you know, a semi-gloss on the ceiling. I'm not sure what she's using. Let her do her thing. Usually I paint the projects, but as you go around and look, see? And then look back over on this wall. You see where I haven't done it yet. And then if you look to the left, I just did this wall. So instantly the dark lines are gone. And when they go to paint, it's all done.